Cities didn't exist 10,000 years ago. And then our ancestors discovered this incredible way to bring us together so that together we can be more than each of us individually. In the past, our model of cities was that you have to live in the city because that's where jobs are, that's where opportunity is. But at the same time, when we are together, clearly we, we face other issues. We face congestion, traffic, pollution. And those problems have plagued cities in the past and they still plague cities today. A lot of the cities we see around the world are now old cities. They need to be retrofitted with new technology, with new modes of transportation, with new solutions to problems that have developed over the decades and centuries. You know, things are changing because of style, things are changing because of new materials, but the morphology, the overall morphology of the city has been remarkably stable. You know, what has changed instead is life. Hi, my name is Alicia Bagat. I'm the Futures Lead at Forum for the Future. Carlo Ratti, I'm professor at MIT, where I direct a place called Sensible City Lab. My name is Michal Ziso. I'm an architect on Earth and also a space architect. My name is Patrick Nowak. I'm executive director of Future, Foresight and Imagination at the Dubai Future Foundation. When we think about responsive architecture, responsive buildings or objects, there's many ways to make it happen. One of them is a kinetic way. You can really move things, move atoms. And that is possible. Diverse people have different needs and we need to start thinking how to make flexible architecture that can react to us. Not necessarily speak to us, but change for us. To do that means that to bring artificial intelligence into buildings, into objects, into cities, to make them behave more like living things. Maybe we would not uh, determine where the windows in our walls are located. Maybe we could pull them to the sides and up and down. Uh, we see a lot of rooms that are shifting during the day uh, that are very, very small, but that can have everything at the same place. So we see the stars of that. When we think about responsive buildings or objects, we can just play also with, uh, with ephemeral dimensions. Think about temperature. Today we heat entire buildings even when they're empty. We cool them when they're empty. Think about a future when actually energy could be used only where it matters, next to people. Think about living in this thermal bubble where, you know, first of all, you can control preferences, but also you contribute a lot to energy saving. And in the middle of all of that is actually intelligence, artificial intelligence. When objects, when cities talk back to us, then becomes a different relationship. It means like our cities become like living beings. If you want to look ahead 10, 20, 30 years, well, one thing is going to be crucial and that's uh, going to be climate change. In other terms, how to preserve the fragile ecology of our planet. One of the things that I'm really interested in is the rewilding movement. Could there be areas of wildland, of natural land that people in the city could take advantage of hopefully a lot more green, vertical green, uh, that we can, that we would hopefully see, um, and, and a lot more diverse materials, building materials, not just uh, steel and concrete. We know what changes we have to make to make our cities more sustainable. There's just established systems in place in, that are kind of preventing that. Dubai is in a very unique position in that it has the potential to address some of these challenges it's also quite an interesting place in terms of wanting and, and being ready to experiment with the latest knowledge and technology that's available. If we are not the uh, architects of the future, we're going to be the, the victims of the future. So how can cities be more um, people forward? There is an opportunity to make cities places that people don't have to live, but that they want to live. Life 30 years ago was incredibly different than today. In a similar way, life tomorrow urban life in particular will be incredibly different than what it is. <laughs>